Hello everybody, Bastard from TechnoTalk once again with another Java tutorial. And uh, to start off this tutorial, I'm going to teach you another way to print out things. Right now, all we know is system.out.print and either ln or nothing in order to print things. And um, I'm going to teach you another way to do it, especially if you have a lot of variables in your print like this. The way we did it last time was the sum of, and then we had to, outside of our quotation marks, add num1, and then inside, and, and then do all this, and it's kind of uh, quarrelsome. Not quarrelsome, that means argument. What the, f what is wrong with my vocabulary today? That's kind of, oh my god, uh, what's the word? Something, it's something, okay? It's uh, too much work. <laughs> god, what's wrong with me? So, instead we're going to do something else. So get rid of all this print. Now, instead of saying print ln, what we're going to actually have is say printf, and this stands for print format, and this is just an uh, easier way to organize what we're printing, and it's going to be formatting, it's actually going to take two arguments instead of one. We're used to one where you just write what you want it to print, but print format's actually a little different. So inside of our quotation marks, go ahead and write first um, the sum of, now in the past, what we would do is outside of this, we would add num1 if we wanted to say that. But instead, right now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a percent sign, and we're going to put d. And then we're just going to keep writing the sum of percent d and percent d again is percent f. And then what this means is that we're telling Java the sum of, and then as soon as it sees this in printf, the percent sign, which is the mod sign actually. Actually, I don't think I've gone over mods. I should probably do that uh, in the next tutorial. Um, it's going to know that's a special character. It's going to know that it's going to not print percent %d. What it's going to do is it's actually going to know that there's going to be an integer here. d is going to be for integers. So you see, wherever we have a percent %d, there's going to be an integer filled in here. And as you can see, num1 and num2 are integers, so we're going to put percent %d. Percent %f is for double. So you see how we have double sum, so that's going to be percent %f. Now, in order to tell it what exactly to put where, outside of the sum of whatever, whatever is whatever, we're going to put a comma, and then we're going to put the value that the first percent %d is going to be, which is num1. So the first variable that it encounters, it's going to fill in num1 for that percent %d. And then we're going to have num2 fills in the second percent %d. And then we're going to have um, sum is going to fill in the percent %f. So you would have as many things here as you uh, need. Oh, did I say two arguments? It's actually more. But yeah, as many things here as you would need to fill in here. So this is the same thing. It's just more organized. So if I run it, you'll see it still says the sum of 4 and 6 is... Well, actually, it's giving us 10.00 because when you say percent %f, it actually takes... What you would need to do is if you wanted to say just um, percent... Uh, if you wanted to just say 10.0, you'd say percent point one f, and then it would say is 10.0. And uh, say you wanted it to be a whole number. Actually, I'm not sure if that works, but it does. See, it just gives you 10, even though it's a double. If you put percent zero, and that's one of the great things of printf of you can actually format how you want your doubles and such to turn out. Now, the next part of, for the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to call methods from different classes and how to use more than one class. So we're going to go ahead and go over to tutorials over here. You can't really see the whole thing, but just right click it and say new class. We're going to create a new class for this um, program. Let's call it Baggins and let's create the class. So now we have public class Baggins. Now we're not going to need to put another main method in this class because we already have a main method here. Remember that every Java program is only going to have one main method because that's going to run whenever you run it and that main method should be in your main class and the only thing that main class means is the class that has the main method so we're gonna make a method in this class so alright right now we have this program that when we run it it says the sum of 4 and 6 is 10 but what if we wanted on the next line we wanted it to say Bilbo Baggins is awesome pretty simple but what if the code that says Bilbo Baggins is awesome is in a different class for example this Baggins class in a different method well, how are we going to call it? You'll see. So, in Baggins class, we're going to make a method. Remember, first word, public. Second word, though, is going to be the return type. Instead of void, we're going to actually put string. Because this method is actually going to be returning a value, and it's going to be returning a string value. And then we're going to call this, um, I don't know, uh, bbag. 
I don't really care. Or let's call it BB. Or who cares what it's called? I'm gonna call it B bag. And then empty parameters. And what we're going to have in this method, what we're going to have it do is we're going to have string B, and it's going to equal Bilbo Baggins is awesome. So now we have this string. Uh, why is it giving me an error? Oh, it must return. Duh. The reason it's giving me an error is because I set my return type for string, but I haven't returned a value yet. So what you're saying when you say public string is you're telling Java when it's running this method that there's going to be a return and there's going to be a certain variable, a certain value that is going to be returned by this method. So in order to say that, we're going to use a new keyword called return, and we're going to say return b. So what this is going to do is it's going to return b. And pretty much what return means is that whenever we call this method b bag, that method is going to represent the string b. So you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So say we want to call that method. Remember here when we created our object, Bilbo B equals new Bilbo? Well, what this B represents is it represents an object of the class Bilbo. But if that's so we can call methods from the Bilbo class. But if we wanted to call a method from the backends class, we can't use the object of the Bilbo class. We'd actually have to create a new object, and this is pretty simple, of the backends class. So call it backends bag equals new backends. So we learned this last tutorial. This is pretty much the exact same thing, except that our um, class names is going to be Baggins, because that's what we, the class that we want to get the method from. So now we have Bag, which can call any method from the class Baggins, and B, that can call any method from the class Bilbo. So now, after print sum, after um, all this that we already had, we're going to have to call this method, and we'd have to use Bag, because now we're using the Baggins class, dot B Bag. It's a weird method name and what this is going to do is it's going to perform this actually hold on that's not right chill out sir we're going to have system dot out dot print line because we're actually going to be printing something and we're going to want to print Bilbo Baggins is awesome so we're gonna to want to print string B so we're gonna to want to print B bag because remember this method represents B so we're gonna say bag dot B bag so right now what this means is that this method right here represents the string b. So now if we run this, it's going to say the sum of 4 and 6 is 10, and then it's going to say Bilbo Baggins is awesome. And um, real quick, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just put a new line so that if we run this, it looks a little nicer. The sum of 4 and 6 is 10, Bilbo Baggins is awesome. Woo, this has been fun. So that's how you call methods from a different class. And uh, yeah, that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. See ya.